Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing the original product from Romain Gautier, his first watch out of the Vallée de Jeux. Launched in 2007, this is the Prestige HM Heure Minute. It is both an hour and a minute, and this is the classically beautiful Gautier, the closest to his spiritual inspiration, Philippe Dufour, who did inform the Gautier watchmaking aesthetic, albeit more on the case back than the general design. This is one of the few Gautier watches that feels like something Dufour himself could have made, not just on the reverse, but also on the obverse. Now, the watch you see here is 41 millimeters in diameter in white gold. There were four series of 38 watches made in the Prestige HM debut collection. So two different series of rose gold, one with a silver dial, one with a black dial, 38 of each series, one series in platinum, 38 pieces, and one series in white gold, and this is that 38 piece white gold edition. 41 millimeters in diameter. You can see it's fairly thin in profile. The watch is only 11.3 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, 48.9 millimeters, and it has a fairly broad and modern 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. With a solid gold dial and a solid gold case, it's a weighty watch. I would recommend it for wrists as small as 15 centimeters in circumference. You can see when I look down the barrel, I do have a little bit of clearance on each side. So if my wrist were maybe one centimeter smaller, I'd be fine. So six, 16 here, that's what you're looking at. Easy to cuff underneath a dress sleeve. You can see that. Recommended for wrists 15 centimeters circumference or larger. The strap that's fitted here is a super high quality piece, as you can see, from Aaron Bespoke. Calfskin on the back, cashmere on the top, a lovely tritone of anthracite, white, or I guess we should say anthracite, silver, white, and blue. And you can see that there are distinct patterns that become more apparent as you move the strap away from the lens. Taking a quick look, you can see that it features a contrasting binding stitch. It has a sheer cut side showing the layers of leather. The skin on the bottom is wonderfully intact and supple. And we have a matching Roma Gautier white gold pin buckle. The case is sophisticated. As you can see, it features this sort of I would call it a concave, convex transition. So from the domed bezel down, we have this convex profile that quickly shifts into a concave profile as it narrows toward the case back. You can also see that there's a sort of dished concave to the lug profiles, and the lugs are dramatically fabricated separate from the case and then welded on with all evidence of the welded joint removed. This is super artisanal, low volume handcraft of a case. And this is exactly what you expect from a brand with the pedigree of Romain Gautier. Now, Gautier himself is an engineer and a businessman. So he has an engineering degree, but also an MBA. And he wanted to look within his home, the Vallée du Jeu, for inspiration when he started his watchmaking, because ultimately he was not a watchmaker. So he decided to draw from the best. And Philippe Dufour was one of his guiding lights. And you can really see more in this watch and the HMS, which is the Heure Minute et Second. You can really see the Dufour influence on that more than the later logical ones and sports watches. So here we have a dial that features a sort of combination of anthracite and true gray. And the dial is a three-part construction, each of the three parts made of solid gold. So you've seen a lot of guilloche done on sterling silver. Well, this is done on solid 18 karat gold. You can see there are several different patterns. There are matte finished concentric brushings for the outer dial and then the hour track. You can also see that there's a sunburst motif on the center dial. And then what maybe we could call a grand doge or barleycorn pattern for the dial below the hands. You'll also note that it's an off-centered dial with the logo and the hands located above the center line of the dial. So it's a bit asymmetric in a way that's subtle. It doesn't jump out at you. 
There's a lot to love here, and you can see there are also several focal planes and a few nice details, like a bevel on the inner face of this uh, outer track, and both the inner and the outer face of the outer track, just nicely done. And as you can see, a nice watchmaker's four foy or leaf style hands, minimal branding, minimal text, all grayscale, a very attractive watch. On the reverse side, you can see one of the standout features. This watch is a, cr it's basically a crownless watch, because when you look at it from the front and from the side, the crown doesn't register. It's actually a case back winder and a case back setter. So a lot like a Omega central tourbillon, this works and you can see it's, it's toothed to give you an idea of which way it winds. Uh, it also pops up. You can actually draw it up, pop it up, put it into the setting position. Now I can set the watch and then it collapses and snaps back down once you've set it. It is a 60 hour manual wind power reserve. The movement is entirely proprietary, and impressively, it's 34 millimeters in diameter, so this movement was sized to suit the case. The two things really do belong together. Normally, you will see companies that have to buy movements, fit them into cases, and then whatever the gap between case, dial, and movement size is, they try to cover it up with tricks. No tricks here. This movement pushes right out to the edge of the case back. You can see is the caliber 2206 Earl Minute. That is the name of the movement. And it features a lot of proprietary Romain Gautier watchmaking, not just the bridges and plates. You can also see Gautier's distinctive wheel within a wheel recursive design. So the entire drivetrain, also the free sprung balance, the balance and the escapement itself are made by Gautier, so all of the tough parts being made in-house as well. You can also see that the company makes its own screw. One advantage of this S-shaped slot is that it allows the screw to take more torque than a standard flathead without stripping out, so there are mechanical advantages there. Hopefully, it also keeps idiots who don't know from attempting to operate on the watch. You can see how the case back also uses those distinctive screws, again, to keep the tree shade watchmaker out of the mechanism. Now, being free-sprung makes this easier to adjust precisely using masses on the balance rim and also more shock tolerant. It pivots on 22 joules. It beats away at 4 hertz or 8 beats per second. You gotta remember again, 60 hour manual wine power reserve and some of the finest finishing I have ever witnessed. Let's go from the base plate up. First, the base plate, which you can see is freehand engraved, as are the bridges. Again, freehand engraved with a burn, not done with some sort of a laser or a lathe. And then we have engine turning on the base plate. All of these screw heads are black polished and their circumferences are chamfered. You could see an extraordinarily broad set of Cote de Genève with a deep color gradient from side to side, laid down by abrasive wheel. You'll note that the beveling is as broad as the Grand Canyon, and I really mean this is special stuff. Folks, take a look at how deeply drawn those interior angles are. That takes time. That takes skill. That takes a rare competence. You don't find that even in the likes of many Geneva Hallmark movements. This is something extremely special. You can also see that there's been beveling inside the jewel sinks, so that's a nice, that's a nice addition. Take a quick look at the ratchet wheel on top of the barrel. You can see that its teeth have been interior beveled, their tops have been polished, and then the ratchet wheel inboard of the teeth has been solarized. Super impressive stuff. Difficult to capture on this camera that keeps deciding what it wants to focus on, but you can see it here. You can also see that the barrel itself has been solarized. The click, which is made of steel, has been black polished on its top, then beveled on its side. You can see just how broad the bevels are all the way, and you can see how many of those sharp interior angles there are all over the place on this movement. You can also see how well finished those wheels are. They're satinated across their top, but you can also see that they've been interior beveled, including inside those circles within circles. So there's a lot to love here, and it boggles the mind to think of how much time was spent. You can also see there are sharp outward points where bevels come to meet a point. So those sharp inward angles and those outward angles, they're equally impressive. There's a black polished steel cap that sits atop the escape wheel cock. Everything here, industry best style. 30 meters water resistant, but I recommend you not test the theory. This one is for the pleasure of the eyes, high and dry. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.